Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be repurposing this reversing polarity switch to meet our needs. Now, I did this in a live stream a while back, and in the live stream, I mentioned how I bought one of these switches and I lost it, so I bought another one. Well, I found the one that I lost. I didn't actually throw it away. Um, it was just lost in the pile of stuff on my toolbox. So, benefit for me, now I have two of them. So I'm gonna build this one the same as I did the other one with a slight modification um, of just some different banana jacks on the end. So the switch is a maintained switch. We have off in the, in the middle. Um, I don't know, they have a an off and an on symbol on there, but it's really not off and on. I don't know if one is supposed to be reversed and one is supposed to be not, but either way, um, however we wire it up, it is going to switch polarity for us. So I'll probably just relabel it after we're done. I'll put um, just a label on here of normal and reverse just so I can identify it. This switch was 17 something, maybe $18 on Amazon. And then the banana jacks that we're installing, I got those on Amazon as well. I got like a 10 pack of them around $10 a piece. So I have a new style that I haven't used before and we're going to see if that will uh, give us additional benefit. And what it is is a retractable shield banana jack. So let me uh, assemble this temporarily here. And it's not fully depressed, but you know, it looks like a normal banana jack there. We have a sleeve over the contact point to prevent it from arcing, but it's spring loaded and it kind of retracts there. So this is going to be beneficial for plugging into that pulse width modulation pro um, tool that I have. It's a PWM driver because it will not accept a shielded uh, banana jack. And then on the other end, I am going to put on just a regular set. Now, both of these can be plugged into from either end, male or female, but I do need the retractable shield for that pulse width modulation pro. This is also going to be beneficial to plug into a power probe, or even if you're going straight to the battery, to a device, a window motor, whatever it is, that you want to run that motor one way and then the other without having to unplug, reposition, and hook back up. Also to assist me, um, I just have a regular board, drilled a couple holes in it, a few different sizes and a few different depths. What this is gonna allow us to do is just drop this BNC terminal inside of there and it's gonna hold it for us while we solder. If you're working on a metal bench, you can use something like this guy. Um, one end of it will hold the terminal. The other end, you can hold your wire in place. Um, sometimes all you need is the one end holding on there. Um, and we could do that. We could just stick it on top of the, uh, the soldering station here and it could hold just fine for us. Now, fortunately with these new style connectors I got, I don't have to worry about sliding this over the wire to begin with. Um, it has a cutout slot in this little cap that will uh, prevent me from screwing up like we did in the live stream. Now, I haven't done one of these yet. I haven't soldered one, so this is going to be a learning experience. I think what the instructions show is just right on top of this little lip, they want you to lay the wire there and solder it in place. I think we'll try it just around the one side. I think what I'll do also is I'll tend the wire first We'll just apply a little bit of solder to it. We may pretend the terminal as well. Now, one nice thing if you're using the alligator clips is that it does dissipate the heat a little bit. So we could, uh, you know, protect the little plastic ball on the other end of this, but I believe the wood will do the same thing. It'll act like a big heat sink. So we got solder on there. Let's heat both these up and melt them together. We may have to apply a little bit of additional solder, but that might be all right. I think, I think we're gonna be good. So already um, we're doing a way better job than we did in the live stream. Let that cool off just a little bit. Okay, see so we're, we're gonna put a spring on there and this transparent shield there. And we got black wire. We'll stick this down inside of the black terminal. Hope it fits, just barely. And then with a little groove facing the wire, I'm going to try and lock this in place. 
Now the insulation on this wire might be a little too thick. There we go. Okay, and that's it. We have a banana jack with retractable shield. Oh, shield got stuck there. Might need to, okay, there we go. So if we're using a regular plug that accepts a shielded banana jack, we're good to go. If we're using other devices, then the retractable shield will be kind of nice. I kind of want to build a set of uh, terminals like this for my breakout box because it does not accept a shielded plug. And you normally don't want a whole bunch of uh, open metal plugs there as you're working on data communication lines. So I'll go ahead and uh, solder up this other terminal and then we'll jump to the other side. Okay, we have the red side done as well. These can be plugged in back to back, just like the other style I'm using. They just have the retractable shield, which a little sticky, they might have to break in. Now for this side. Now working on this side, I believe on the last one we did, I did black and blue as the same color. So we're gonna do the same thing. We have to preload this little plastic guy on the line first. So there is our shielded banana jack plug here. And then there's just a round hole next to it. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me move my hand, maybe you can see it. So that smaller hole we're gonna feed the wire into. With the wire, or with the plastic piece down on the wire, now we can solder this piece on. Now in the live stream, I uh, I goofed up and and did all of them but one that way. Now with that helping hand, makes it a lot more convenient. Hopefully we'll have less issues. I think I'll go ahead and tin this uh, this wire first. And I'm melting the solder into the wire. You don't want to just glob it on there, like up above. You want to heat up the wire enough that the, the solder soaks into the wire. Apply some heat. Now it'll take a little bit of heat to get this connector as hot as we need to uh, get the solder to soak in. Okay, we got solder floated in the back side of there. So we know that we had enough heat transfer to get it to melt. Might need just a touch more solder. Seal up the rest of that opening. We, we probably don't really need it, but just to uh, make sure as this connector gets moved around, it doesn't start to, to wiggle and break the solder joint. We'll add a little bit more in there. That one will let cool off for a second and then we'll finish assembling it. Yeah, it should be good to hold it in place. We'll uh, assemble it after it cools off, but we can get this other one going. Hold the wire around. Okay. Push that together till it snaps. And I suppose if you could, you could super glue it, but I think it'll hold together all right. Plus, if the wire ever breaks or fails for some reason, you can pop it apart and resolder it. Get this other side put together. Still a touch warm. Okay, there we go. Um, I suppose we could test it out. So if we plug this in like so on our meter and then connect these two ends together and go to resistance, will we get a negative in one direction and positive in the other? Let's see. So not the best <laughs> on resistance, uh, three and a half ohms. If we go the other way, we have just about zero. Oh, 
Okay, might have been just in the switch contact. So it's not going to show us positive negative. What we could do here is we'll just plug both black terminals in. We'll even give you a beep. If we go the other way, no continuity. So let's go black to the red. We get continuity that way. And it disables it going that way. Make sure with the red terminal in here. Yep. Flip that around again. And we have continuity through the switch in both positions. It does reverse direction. Um, I'll put a link to all these parts in the description down below if you decide that you want to build one of these. Then if you click on those links, um, I do get a small kickback from that. Helps support the channel. If you have questions or comments, put those down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.